Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. We continue this series on DFM for Machines by talking about modularity, the ultimate in flexibility of machine design. So, what is modularity? We will define it here to be a design that encourages or at least accommodates future changes with relative ease. Of course, relative is, well, relative. Nothing is easy, so you have to weigh the costs versus benefits of what might be a more expensive design or request. Modularity must be built in from the very start of the design process, which is the initial layout, so that in the future we might make changes more easily. The machine builder may want modularity so that they might be able to sell many design variations without changing so many design details. The customer may have different motives. One example is pilot plant machinery where we might anticipate the need to try new design variations for some component within the larger machine. A concrete example here would be to update a coder head, or perhaps try a totally different coding method should the market indicate a new direction is needed. In this example, you might salvage large parts of the machine, including the unwind, the dryer, and the winder. A final concrete example is the many consumer products where design variations may happen in product cycles that are shorter than a year. Add a feature this year, subtract a feature next year, well you get the idea. Perhaps the simplest and most useful form of modularity is the concept of provision for. Here you almost certainly will pay back for the effort by not necessarily needing to buy something you are not sure you need or you may not need at this time. I will give you the simple example of provision for a bowed roller spreader. Let us say that you are not sure that you need a spreader or perhaps you don't know what spreader is best or Perhaps you might not need a spreader unless you change your materials to something more flexible that could need the spreading help. You get the idea. Here we leave space for the spreader. As we learned in Web 101, our textbook starting point would be the 2 to 1 span ratio with a 30 degree wrap. This open space would accommodate other geometries and perhaps even other spreader types. All we have to do is provide a machine mounting surface with a pre-drilled bolt pattern on the frames for our best guess spreader. If we change our minds, we can make an adapter to go from our mounting to some different spreader. While we give the spreading example here, this could be for any number of small components such as drive motors, corona treat stations, static removal, edge trim slitting, web cleaners, and on and on. One final advantage of the provision for idea is that even if you choose to buy and install the component to begin with, you can and should remove it should it be found not to be helpful. This will save on maintenance and operating costs. Returning to the figure, we note that if we take the spreader out, wrap angles, spans, and other web handling concerns already taken care of at the very initial design step. We design with provision for either a with or without option. Mechanical modularity is our first concern. Here we would try and design subassemblies that are standalone. Mounting on the floor is generally easier except in larger machines where you might need to have a continuous sole plate epoxied into a sturdy concrete foundation. 
Note that moving either end of the line, unwind or winder, is difficult at best. Often it is impossible to move the ends due to building constraints. Piping and wiring is our second concern. Piping is trivial because it can be spliced. Wiring, whether instrumentation or power, is not so easy because there's no such thing as a wire stretcher. The best we might do here is to have a junction box for each module. Drives and PLCs may not be so much of an issue for two reasons. The first is the service life of these devices is quite short, not much more than five to ten years. In that case, you might just replace all of this during a major upgrade. Second, if we buy more drive rack space and I.O. than we need during the original design, then adding more motors and controls may involve only a bit of programming and wiring. This may be well worth considering since integrating new and old drive components is very challenging as covered by Clarence Claussen in a recent AIMCAL conference. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical video series. Stay tuned as we move on to more advanced web handling topics. Let me know if there is something you would especially want to hear about.